All right. So hi, everyone. Uh, as you can see, I'm Reishmi. And today, I'm going to introduce to you an idea that will culminate in the next decade or two. So the idea is about eating insects as the future of food. So there's a lot of controversy about having insects as the future of food. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tell you why you should consider insects as the future. So this is the future of farming. As you can see, the gentleman there, he's doing the manual way of farming, which is very labor rigor. Um, there's also people who use the mechanical way of farming. But the issue is that in the year 2050, there'll be a large population. It'll be 9 billion in population, an additional of 2 billion in population. And there might not be enough of food and also animal meat to cater to this population. Because in 2050, there'll be a rise in temperature by 3 Celsius. So your plants, your vegetations might not survive. The animals being mammals might not survive. And that's how insects come into play. Because insects are cold-blooded animals. They survive everywhere and anywhere. And they can adapt to any temperatures. So, the future of Gen Z, since today it's all about Gen Z, in the next 20 to 30 years or so, our Gen Z will become uh, middle-aged adults within the age of 48 to 50 years old. And um, you will see that they definitely need more protein, and these insects will supply protein. Because protein in older adults are necessary to maintain their muscles, and protein is also essential for their immune system as well. Because if you have insufficient um, protein, your immune system is actually quite poor. And a lot of older adults actually have muscle wasting when they don't have enough of protein. So you're going to tell me, like, why insects? There's like vegan, vegetarian options. There's cultured meat. You know, like, we can look into all of this. Why insects? Like, it's so yucks. So first thing first, in 2050, with the rise of temperature of 3 Celsius, I don't think so we'll do that well with vegetation. Some may survive, some may not survive. And just to let you know, plant-based meat is actually very high in additives and preservatives. So if you see, right, animal meat is very um, turgor, it's very elastic. Plant-based meat is also almost the same texture. That's because additives and preservatives are added to it. So you have to think, do you want a um, highly rich additive and preservative meat for you to eat? Or do you want cell-based or cultured meat, which is very high in emission of greenhouse gases when it is manufactured? So I'm going to show um, a couple of slides with a lot of insects ahead. So um, if you feel a bit eerie or gory about it, maybe you can close your eyes and just listen to what I have to say. So this is the future of insects. I think there's some here who have eaten it. These are some pictures of people consuming it. Uh, I'm sorry if it's eerie, but it's, it's a culture. In many countries, in Vietnam, in Cambodia, insect eating is a culture. In Sabah, Sarawak, people tend to eat worms there. Um, in Kedah, in Pandang, it's a specific state, people tend to have grasshoppers because the grasshoppers there destroy the vegetation. So they tend to catch the grasshoppers and grill them and have it. So it is pretty common. It's just that in the city, we don't get it that much. And worldwide, 2 billion people consume them. But most of them are in aboriginal areas or in the village areas. Because after all, everything is about sustainability and survival. And the commonly eaten insects, as you can see, we have got um, dragonfly, we've got worms, termites, beetles, grasshopper and crickets are actually very, very common in the Asian region. Um, and there are cicadas, so cicadas over here, um, they are usually more common in uh, places where there's a lot of paddy fields, where people tend to catch them and eat them. And also other insects like silkworms and all that which are not shown. Yeah, and also the best part is insects are actually made into fine dining foods. You can see fettuccine, scallops, ravioli. There are restaurants um, where they are already serving insects as fine dining food. So there are restaurants in Thailand. 
And in Malaysia, we have got our own Malaysian brand where they are serving insects as well. They have made it into meat patties, uh, meatballs, hot dogs, even biscuits. I've tried um, cricket, laid, um, biscuits made of cricket protein. It's not too bad, you know. You have to try it to appreciate it. And there are 400 brands worldwide selling insects. They're putting insects in their food. There's beer, beetle beer. There's pasta made of insects. There is energy bars. There are burger patties. There are everything that you can think of made of insects. But this is mostly in the international market, specifically in the European market. Well, I see a lot of people cringing already. Okay, so don't worry. I won't be um, over-promoting it, but this is just for information. And the market value, because I'm talking a lot about it, Yes, the market value is growing. In 2026, it will be about 1.5 billion because a lot of R&D are being done to find a substitute to the meat in the market. There is a lot of interest being generated. And because Gen Z is very into exploring what other options there are in the market, this option has been coming up very often. So what worries Gen Z? I mean, we are talking about Gen Z, and most probably in the next 10, 20, 30 years, they'll be consuming insects. It's, um, I would say it is inevitable that this will come into play someday. What worries them is most of them are worried about the environment. Many of them, they're more into advocacy. A lot of them are worried about the impact of the food choices to the environment. That's why a lot of Gen Z are more into vegan and vegetarian choices. And also, they have a lot of diets now. You hear pescetarian, you hear flexitarian. These are all inventions by the Gen Z, because we never used to hear that once upon a time. There are also things like a lot of them want to work on reducing carbon footprint. And as you know, livestock rearing, planting, all this uh, planting in the fields, all cause carbon footprints, a lot of carbon footprint. And as far as food, as I mentioned, a lot of new diets are emerging out there, um, thanks to Gen Z. So a lot of them are looking into mindful eating. That means they want clean and natural food, a lot of mindful eating. And a lot of them have become very um, nutritionally rich in information due to the access um, to internet and all that. So, Let's talk about the nutrition information. Since I'm a dietitian, I work immensely with food. So we'll talk about the nutrition information. So crickets and mealworms, they're very high in protein as compared to fish, chicken, beef, and tofu itself. Tofu is a vegetarian option. And why they're high in protein? If you see, right, insects, they're always running around. They're always jumping about. You know, every time you go near them, they fly. That is, that's why they have, they're high in protein because they're high in muscles. They have a lot of muscles. If you see cows and pigs, they'll be walking slowly. So that's why their protein levels are low and they're quite high in fat as well. Besides that, all these insects, they are also high in omega-3 and fiber. So omega-3 is, of course, good for heart health. And fiber, I'll touch, touch about it in the next slide. So worldwide, we are having um, uh, an issue with fiber. A lot of people are having stomach and gastro issues. That is because we are not consuming the recommended amount of fiber. The recommended is about 25 to 35 gram. And Malaysians, we consume only 15 to 18 gram. And the solution to it can be in insects. So insects have got a coating called chitin. Which, can, which is high in fiber, and consuming it can actually um, settle a lot of fiber-related woes. And another one more thing great about insects, yes, the calories are low. Ladies, don't worry, you won't put on weight eating insects. They're high in protein, they're low in calories. I think if that is of your concern. But another one more thing which is very interesting about insects is they're high in iron. So um, I think many ladies over here, especially of the reproductive age, they have got iron deficiency issues, which give rise to anemia. And especially in the African countries, you know, in the sub-Saharan Africa, there is a lot of um, premature maternal deaths. There is a high rate of infection, all due to the deficiency in iron. And all that can be addressed by insects. So if you see, right, the iron is very high, the iron content is high, much, much higher than the meats that you eat out there. And for the gentlemen who are into bodybuilding, this is perfect for you. 
Why? Because it's high in protein and it's low in fat. I mean, all bodybuilders want to maintain their body fat percentage, right? At like 5%, less than 10%. Why not? This is high in protein. So easy protein sauce. Okay, I see a lot of gentlemen looking at me one kind already. And coming to global issue, this is a very big issue. Globally, right now, greenhouse gas emission is very high. Land degradation, there's no crop rotation going on. The land, every year, the same crop is being planted and the quality of the land is degrading. There's food scarcity due to the change in the weather, due to global warming. And there's poor quality of water due to contamination of manure in the water and also due to the water taps drying out. So how do insects help? First thing, if you see, right, the edible portion of insects is 80%, which is very high. That means whatever that you eat, you can eat the whole insect. There's nothing to be wasted. Maybe you have to throw away the fillers. Maybe you have to throw certain aspects, especially the hard ones that cannot be digested. But 80% are consumed. The rest, you only consume about 40 to 50% because you have to throw away the bones. Yes, some of you do boil their bones and make it into soup, but at the end of the day, you still have to throw it away. The next would be the greenhouse gas emission. If you see insects, it's very minimal. And if you see cows and pigs, they are much, much higher. Feed, of course, you have to feed the animals to sustain them. Insects is low, and the rest are much, much higher. Land, you don't need that much of land for insects. You can actually keep them in a small um, container, and they will breed and multiply very rapidly. But when it comes to pigs, cows, chickens, you have to give them some space to move. Water, insects don't need that much. Cows and pigs, a lot. Other information, uh, insects, they multiply really, really fast. Like they are immediate source of protein. Well, um, when it comes to chicken, pig and cows, mm, well, you know, it might be one or two cows for cows per year. Um, pigs, it might be two liters. Chicken is about one egg per day. So not a very sustainable option, right? Then for time to reach adulthood, I would say that um, in insects it's pretty fast, it stays two months, the rest it still takes some time. Energy efficiency, as I mentioned, cold-blooded animals, they adapt to the environment fast, the rest, they are mammals, they don't. And transmit diseases, insects not so. To humans, insect to human transmission of diseases is not that much because um, our genetics are different as compared to the transmission of mammal to mammal, which is the other animals. Another one more aspect of insects which is not mentioned is all the other three animals are injected with hormones and antibiotics. So even if your cows or your chickens are not sick, they're still injected with antibiotics to prevent them from falling sick. So, and if you see, right, um, for your chicken, um, a lot of them are also injected with hormones for them to grow faster. So what else can insect help? They can help to reduce malnutrition. About one third of the population has no access to proper food. You can settle that with insects. And if you're worried about exposure to pesticides, insecticides, and all other bacteria, don't worry, all of them are grown in labs. So they're all QC tested. But I'll tell you upfront, the disadvantage is, first thing, there might be a lot of ethical issues and religion-related issues. For example, cockroaches. Um, some Muslims might not eat because it's very dirty. So there might be a question of ethical issues over there and religious issues. Another one more thing is allergy. So if you're somebody with very, very poor immune system, you might not be able to tolerate eating insects. If you are somebody who has all this asthma, hay fever, you might not be able to tolerate. If you can't consume mollusks and crustaceans, which means lobsters, snails, prawns, you might not be able to tolerate insects as well. And yeah, I'm sure, you, like, I've, I'm seeing faces over here like, what is this? Like insects. Okay, first thing you need to do is to change your mindset. Do you know lobsters were once known as cockroaches of the sea? because they used to clean the sea beds, and they used to be fed to prisoners, to cats, to the maids in America once upon a time. And um, when after the World War II, they wanted to introduce a new dish to the upper society. So what they did, they took lobster, they sauteed it, made it into a new dish, and it ended up being delicacy, fancy, and luxurious. So 
you never know what is the future of insects and how it may be presented to you the next time round. So with that, thank you very much.